I want to tell you about a secret bank that only the wisest people in the world know about. This bank every single day will give you $86,000. But there is a catch. At the end of the day, those $86,000, anything that you've not withdrawn from that account will be wiped away, will be deleted, will be gone forever. And then tomorrow a new account will start and you'll get another $86,000. What would be the sensible thing to do? What would anyone with any common sense do? Well, they'd withdraw every single penny and invest it wisely. Now, you might be thinking, come on, Joe, this is a little bit ridiculous. There's no such thing as this bank that you're talking about. Well, that's where you're wrong. This bank is called the Bank of Time. Every single day, you get 86,400 seconds. And you can either use those seconds wisely, you can make them count for eternity, or you can fritter away the time. So my question to you is, are you wasting not millions and millions of dollars every year, but millions of seconds that could be used mightily for the Lord God who has granted you breath this very day? Psalm 90 verse 12 says this, So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You know, I'll never forget the day when my mother looked at me in her backyard and said, Joe, I blinked and I turned 50. I wonder now if there's someone watching this video who can say the same thing. I blinked and I was 50. I blinked and that was it, I was 60, I was 70. I think time's kind of similar to driving a car. Uh, when you're 10 years old, everything feels like it's going so slow. It's like it's going at 10 miles per hour and you think, I can't wait to turn 11. Then you get to 30, then you get to 40. Okay now, now we're speeding up, now things are going faster. And let's be honest, perhaps there's someone watching this video now who's thinking, well Joe, I'm over the speed limit. Things are going really fast now, I'm getting into older age. So there's one thing I want every single person to know by the end of this video, and it's this you've actually not got that much time left. Whether you're 10 years old or whether you're 70 years old, none of us have got as much time as we think we have left. So here's my question to you. What season of life are you in right now? You see, we've all got these doors of opportunity. There are doors that are open today that tomorrow will be shut. There are windows of opportunity that are open today. You can go through it today, but tomorrow those windows might be closed. So every single one of us needs to think, where am I at this point in life and how can I manage my time? How can I have good command over my time to do as much as I can for the Lord in these times? that he's given me. So young man, young woman, work hard, study hard, get your studies, get your degrees, make sure that you do not fritter away the time playing video games and procrastinating, get your studies down. Read as many Christian books as you can now, whilst you're single, go on short term missions, because once you get married, once you get children, suddenly things are going to become busy and you need to get as much knowledge, you need to remember your creator in the days of your youth while you still can. Mothers. Cherish your children while they are young. The first five years of a child's life are so, so precious. And we only get, as parents, we only get one chance to get that right. We only get one chance to absorb every happy memory. And that's it, it's gone forever. So don't be anxious, don't be worried. I'm a worrier, <laughs> I worry a lot. But you know that it robs you of your joy. The devil wants you to be so anxious that you don't enjoy the blessings that God pours out into your life on a daily basis. So today, maybe after this video, get your small children, sit them on your knee, read them a nursery rhyme and enjoy them. Look into their eyes while they're young and say thank you God that you have blessed me with a beautiful child. Dads, husbands, Shepherd your wives and children and bring them closer to the Lord. Again, you only get one opportunity to be a husband, to be a father. You only get one opportunity to guide those precious hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't work every single hour that you can. Don't spend so much time with your friends and, and doing all of your own pursuits. Make sure that you look after your family. And guys, I'm preaching to myself now. You know, there's one thing I'm totally ashamed of. I've been married to my wife, Emma, for six years now, and to this day, I have still not established a firm family quiet time. We don't do family worship every night. We rarely do family worship, and it's not good enough. 
And perhaps there's another man watching this today who knows that they too need to get their family together and read the Word of God on a daily basis. And then to the retired, to the seasoned that are watching my video. Okay, you've worked hard. No one can take that away from you. And you deserve to rest. You deserve to, to enjoy the fruits of your labor now in your old age. But I would like to just say this one thing. Don't spend all of your time playing golf. Don't spend all of your time at growing vegetables. Do it a little bit, but make sure that you use these latter years to work for the Lord God. You have more time now to pray. You have more time now to, to give. And if your body is able to, why not become an evangelist in your old age? Many older people have become evangelists in their latter years of life. A professor who was dying of leukemia was once asked when he was interviewed at a Christian conference, are you now going to stop doing as much open air preaching? Are you going to now stop doing as many missions now that you're so sick and you're coming towards the end? This was his response. When an athlete comes very close to the finishing line and there he can see, there's that line, it's just at the end, does he slow down? No, he runs faster and faster. And so there might be people watching this and you know that you're coming to the end, but soon you're going to see your master. Soon you're going to see your Lord and savior. Run faster, do more now, because God can certainly use you right now in the place that you are if you're willing to be used by the Lord. Young or old, every single one of us without exception will one day give an account for the time we have lived on this earth to our Lord God. So let us remember this, none of us are spectators, none of us are called to be passengers, none of us are on holiday. While we still have breath in our lungs, while our heart is beating today, let us find out what is the will of God for our lives, what is the work that God wants me to do, and let us make sure that while we have energy, while we are healthy, while we're able to do so, that we live every single second for the Lord God, keeping our eyes on the prize. So hey now, let's get real practical. How much sleep do you get a night? What time do you go to bed? What time do you get up at? How much do you read the Bible for every day? How much time do you spend in prayer? How much time do you spend following selfish pursuits? Are you obedient or do you waste time in sin? Now I could be totally wrong about this but as I was writing notes for this message I felt compelled to say this I believe there could be someone watching this video right now who is about to make a total mess of their life you're going to make the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life and I want to say this to you if that's you right now I beg you I plead with you don't do it stop letting your mind dwell on sin and turn from it. Because the fact is this, there will come a day when you would wish that you had the money to buy a million clocks, a billion clocks, in hopes that just one of those clocks had the power to turn back the time. So if that is you, confess your weakness to this loving Heavenly Father and He will have mercy on you and He'll guide you right back to the shepherd's side because you know that's where you belong. In the 1990s, they did a study on American Christianity and they asked many, many Americans, how long do you spend watching television every single day? Their answer was around two and a half hours. And then they asked the American Christians this, how long do you spend reading the word of God? Do you know what they said? Just seven minutes a day. Can I ask you a question? Are you cheating God of your devotion? Am I giving God the very creme de la creme, the best hours of the day? Or am I giving him the, the cigarette butts of the end of the day? You see, God has given us the most precious book in the world, the Bible, and we are to feed on it. We are to relish it every single day. Just like a starving man feeds on that food, that bread, and it satisfies his soul. So we are to be satisfied by the word of God every time we flick through the pages. Now I'm gonna choose my words very, very carefully. But if you're a person who is away from God, I want to chat to you right now. 
Hebrews 3 verses 7 to 8 say this, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So if you right now are away from the living God, can I ask you a question? What are you pursuing your time with? Perhaps it's good things. Maybe you're searching after a relationship or maybe you're looking after family members. Perhaps you're working on your career and you're putting in lots of hours to, to, to help the business grow. Maybe you're just working on a project, on yourself, going to the gym, on a diet. But whatever it is, be honest with me now, it's not God, is it? Well, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has a word for you. He once said about people who are rich to themselves but are poor to God. He told them that they are fools because this very night their life will be required from them. Oh, mark my words, one of the biggest lies that the evil one is infecting into the minds of the masses is that they've got plenty of time, they've got lots of time left. There is an urgency to your decision. Come with me, let's plunge into the bowels of hell and let's get the whole population of hell and ask them this one question. Let's ask them, if you could trade every single penny you earned in your previous life, if you could trade every single pleasure you had in your previous life, would you swap it to have five minutes to be in my shoes right now? I believe the whole population of hell, every single one of them, without exception, would say, yes, I would. I'd give anything to have five minutes to be in your shoes, five minutes to have the chance to repent and to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my dear friends, my dear friend, if you can hear today the Son of God breathing his last breath, if you can see him on the cross, you can see his soul in turmoil, being smitten by God, bearing in his body the sins that you and I have committed. If you can see that today, don't look the other way. If today, this very day, you can see the Son of God triumphant over the grave, he beat the grave, he conquered death. If you can see him triumphant, raised over all of his enemies, and today he knocks on your heart and says, open the door, let me in, I want to give you eternal life. Whatever you do, don't shut the door in his face. Today, this very day, come to the gentle saviour, the one who loves you, the one who says, you don't have to do anything to earn your salvation, it was done at the cross. I love you, just receive this gift of salvation. Put your trust in me, put your faith in me, and I'll give you eternal life. I have no authority to say to you today, go away and think about it. I have no authority to say, come back next week, watch another video, and then give your life to Christ. No, the only authority I have is the authority which is written in the Word of God, and it says now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. So whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever your plans are for the next hour, they can wait. The next YouTube video, it can wait. If you have not yet put your trust in the Saviour of the world, if you have not yet cried out to God to have mercy on you, for you are a sinner, I am a sinner, then do it right now. Because let's be honest, the clock is ticking and none of us know if we'll be here tomorrow. Now, if you are already a Christian, maybe you could listen to this video now. I'm not going to lie, it's not a feel-good message. I'm talking about death. And, and time but please do go and click on it I think it'll challenge you and if you haven't yet subscribed uh, please do click here we'd love to have you part of this fellowship here at Off The Curb Ministries